Hello, my name is Joshua Brown from the interview training company, howtobecome.com. And in this presentation, I will teach you how to pass your technical full stack developer interview. So if you have an interview coming up for any full stack developer role, then please make sure you watch this video from start to finish because I promise to help you to stand out and succeed. To achieve that goal, this is what I'll cover. I'll start off by giving you a list of full stack developer technical interview questions that I strongly recommend you prepare for. I'll then provide you with example high scoring answers to those questions to ensure you succeed at the first attempt. I'll also make sure to give you some essential tips for passing your technical full stack developer interview before finally telling you how you can instantly download these slides plus 30 great answers to full stack developer interview questions in a PDF guide. And just very quickly, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I want to help you to pass your interview by giving you brilliant answers to the toughest full stack interview questions. And I can only do that if you are subscribed. And please don't forget to hit that like button because this tells me you find these tutorials useful. Okay, let's take a look at that first technical full stack developer interview question. Integrating third party services with your API often results in delayed responses, leading to longer wait times for users. How can you minimize these delays to enhance user experience? Please mention any relevant technologies that could be helpful. Here is my brilliant top scoring answer to ensure you pass. I'd say the most effective approach is implementing asynchronous processing and queuing mechanisms. So for example, in a past project I worked on, we faced challenges with slow response times due to reliance on a third party payment processing service. To address this, we integrated RabbitMQ which is a message queuing service into our architecture. When our API received a payment request, it immediately queued the request and responded to the user, significantly reducing response time. In the background, worker services deployed on a separate server processed these queue requests asynchronously, making calls to the third party payment processor. This decoupling allowed us to maintain a responsive user interface while managing the variable response times of the external service. To keep users informed of their payment processing status in real time, we implemented WebSocket technology. This enabled us to push updates directly to the user's browser, eliminating the need for them to refresh the page or poll the server for status updates. This approach not only improved user satisfaction by providing immediate feedback, but also optimized our system's efficiency by managing third-party service latency effectively. Now you can see that was a brilliant answer because not only did I showcase my knowledge, but I also backed all my knowledge up with practical real life work experience. So when answering any technical interview question, it's always best to demonstrate your knowledge, but also demonstrate your practical work experience. Show what projects you've worked on before and how you've implemented that knowledge, those technologies, those techniques in your answer. And that's how you can score very, very highly. So let's take a look at question number two. How does JavaScript handle asynchronous operations? Here's my top scoring answer. So JavaScript handles asynchronous operations through features like callbacks, promises, and async and wait syntax. Callbacks are functions passed on as arguments to another function, executed after the completion of an operation. However, excess use of callbacks can lead to what is known as callback hell. This makes code difficult to read and maintain. To address this, promises were introduced, representing the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation and its resulting value. Promises allow for cleaner, more manageable code through chaining then for success actions and catch for handling errors. Async and await syntax, building on promises, enables writing asynchronous code in a more synchronous linear fashion. Using async before a function makes it return a promise and await is used to pause the function execution until the promise is resolved. In my previous projects, I've extensively used async and await for database interactions and API calls. This made the code much more readable and easier to debug compared to nested callbacks. By leveraging these features, 
I've been able to handle complex asynchronous workflows effectively, enhancing the performance and reliability of the applications that I've worked on. Well, that was a great answer to that interview question. Now, don't go anywhere as I still have more interview questions and answers to give you in this video. But when you're ready and only if you want to, you can click that link in the top right hand corner or in the pinned comment below the video. It will take you through to my website, howtobecome.com, where you can download my top 30 full stack developer interview questions and answers, which includes all of the most technical questions, behavioral questions and common full stack developer interview questions and answers in a PDF guide. OK, let's take a look at the next technical full stack interview question for you. When a user tries to register a resource that already exists, like signing up with an email address that's already in use, which HTTP status code would be the most appropriate to send in response? OK, here's my top scoring answer for you. In this situation, the appropriate HTTP status code to return is 409 conflict. Some people may also say it would be acceptable to return a 422 unprocessable entity. A 409 conflict status code indicates that the request could not be processed because of a conflict in the request, such as an attempt to create a duplicate resource, which violates certain constraints. From a practical standpoint, in one of my projects when implementing user registration functionality, we use this approach to handle duplicate email registrations. Upon registration, the system checked if the email address was already associated with an existing account. If it was, the API responded with a 409 conflict status code, along with a clear user-friendly error message indicating that the email address was already in use. This not only informed the user of the exact issue, but also guided them to try a different email or proceed to the logging or password recovery flow, enhancing the overall user experience. OK, technical full stack developer interview question number four is this. What have you done previously to reduce the load time of an application? In a previous project, to reduce application load time, we implemented several optimization strategies. Firstly, we adopted lazy loading for images and non-critical JavaScript modules, ensuring that these resources were only loaded when needed. This significantly reduced the initial load time and improved the user experience on slower connections. We also utilized browser caching, setting appropriate cache headers for static assets, which minimize redundant network requests on subsequent visits. Minification and bundling of CSS and JavaScript files were applied to reduce file sizes and the number of server requests. Furthermore, we leveraged a content delivery network, a CDN, to serve static assets from locations closer to the users, dramatically decreasing latency. Lastly, we conducted regular audits with tools like Google's PageSpeed Insights to identify and address performance bottlenecks. These efforts collectively contributed to a substantial reduction in the application's load time, enhancing overall user satisfaction and engagement. OK, technical full stack interview question number five is this. Explain pair programming and your experience with it. Pair programming is a collaborative software development technique where two programmers work together at one workstation. The driver writes the code while the navigator reviews each line of code as it's written, providing suggestions and thinking about the strategic direction of the work. This practice enhances code quality, facilitates knowledge transfer and accelerates problem solving through real-time feedback. Speaking from my own experience, pair programming has been immensely beneficial. Working closely with a partner allowed me to share my knowledge and also learn from their expertise leading to a more robust and well thought out solution. It fostered a culture of collaboration and continuous learning within the team. Additionally, it helped in identifying and fixing bugs more efficiently, which improved our overall productivity. Pair programming also significantly contributed to reducing the code review time since the code written was already vetted by another programmer. Overall, it's been a positive experience that not only enhanced the quality of our work, but also strengthened team dynamics. Now, in preparation for your full stack developer interview, I also recommend you prepare answers to the following questions. Why do you want to be a full stack developer? In your opinion, 
what are the most important skills and qualities needed to become a great full stack developer. Explain how you ensure back end operations are secure and handle erroneous inputs effectively. Share your experiences deploying applications on cloud platforms like AWS or Google Cloud. Detail your experience with both SQL and no SQL databases and how you choose between them for projects. How do you adapt web designs to function seamlessly across various devices? Talk about a project where you had to find a balance between feature richness and application performance. Describe a project that required you to optimize website performance and the strategies you employed. Have you implemented server-side rendering, SSR? What benefits and challenges did you encounter? Describe your strategy for diagnosing and fixing complex issues in a full stack context. Outline the security measures you implement to safeguard web applications and user data. What is your biggest weakness? Why should we hire you as a full stack developer? Now, if you want to get the answers to those questions I just listed, plus the full list of the top 30 full stack developer interview questions, and if you want to accelerate your learning even further to pass your interview at the first attempt, then click that link right now in the top right hand corner of this video for two reasons. The first reason is it would take you through to my website, howtobecome.com, where you can get all of these answers we just covered, plus a total of 30 brilliant responses to full stack developer interview questions. And secondly, the next reason is I've given you three smart questions to ask at the end of your full stack to developer interview on that page. It's a brilliant resource guaranteed to help you prepare effectively for your interview and also more importantly, put you ahead of the competition. Make sure you check out that link. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe as I'm on a mission to help as many people as possible pass their job interviews and I can only do that if you are subscribed. And please also hit that like button as that encourages me to make more videos just like these. If you have any questions regarding any specific full stack developer interview or any technical interview question, do let me know in the comment section below where I'll get back to you with even more interview tips and advice. And finally, don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn. I've put my LinkedIn link in the description below. It's always great to connect with like-minded professionals such as yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the best with your interview. Have a brilliant day.